Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about a DDoS attack that could be devastating uh, to your network, but F5 can help you out and help you mitigate this thing. And specifically, the attack that we're going to talk about today uh, is a DNS attack uh, known as the water torture attack or an NX domain attack. Uh, so anyway, so to kind of to kind of build out the story here, I'm going to draw a quick representation of the of the way that things are supposed to work, and then I'm going to show you what happens when some bad guys start to do some bad things. All right. So whenever you have a website, uh, let's just call it. I'll put example.com uh, right here. Example.com. All right. Then you're going to have what's uh, what's known as an authoritative authoritative name server for that as part of the DNS system. So, all right, so this authoritative name server uh, is, the, is the authority for uh, the domain example.com. All right, so whenever a user, so here's a user out here uh, in the internet, you have a user out here, you know, some guy on his laptop wanting to get to example.com, and they type in their web browser, um, you know, www.example.com, then they go through a series of uh, lookups to figure out what is the actual IP address, because that's what the DNS system does. It, it converts the, uh, you know, the name here to an IP address, because that's what computers talk in. All right, but as it does that, um, it will get routed through like an internet service provider uh, DNS resolver. So here's a resolver, all right? And I'll just put, uh, put a little box around that guy. So the user, through a series of DNS uh, lookups, is going to land on this resolver, and it's going to be looking for what is the IP address of example.com. The ISP resolver is going to say, hey, let me talk to the authoritative name server for that domain, and it's going to request that, what is example.com. And then the name server is going to respond back with the appropriate IP address, um, you know, whatever it is, 1.2.3.4 or whatever. Obviously, that's an example. So it'll, it'll, it'll uh, respond back. Um, everyone loads up their cache with that actual IP address for that um, domain name, and then that way, the next time they have to go to that same place, then they don't necessarily need to go through all these different lookups. Uh, they just have it in their cache. And life is good, and everybody's happy. All right, so that's the way that things are supposed to work. The, uh, the whole water torture attack, or this NX domain attack, um, comes into play where some bad guys have said, hey, here's what we can do. We can, instead of user, uh, I'm going to cross that out and say, all right, now we're going to, now we're going to be an attacker, all right, an attacker bad guy. And so maybe you have a bunch of these guys, you know, that are all ganging up against you to do bad things. And they're all going to um, request some, uh, some nefarious stuff or some, uh, some things that frankly don't exist. Uh, but it does bad things to different stuff. All right, sometimes in a DNS attack, you can have attacker bad guys that request uh, things on behalf of a target victim. So basically, they're, they're sending all these DNS requests in so that, the, that these resolvers or name servers would then flood the responses back to like a target victim. Uh, but that's not what happens here in this water torture attack. What happens here is that Whenever, um, whenever a user typically, uh, in, in the example I just gave, whenever they ask for a correct domain name, then the, author the authoritative name server is going to respond for that correct domain name. Well, what if they, what if they add in what I'm, what's called a subdomain name um, that does not exist? And that's precisely what happens here. So again, instead of asking for example.com, the attacker is going to ask for let me put in a random string of characters here, xyz.example.com, all right? And then they're going to ask, if they're going to land on this ISP resolver, ISP resolver is going to say, hey, authoritative name server, you are the authority for example.com, so you're going to know about this thing, right? But, you know, even though it's got this subdomain listed here, the main domain name is example.com, so it's going to be sending it here. Well, so xyz.example.com is going to come here to the authoritative name server. The authoritative name server is going to start looking around and they're going to say, where is it xyz.example.com? And they're going to search through all their different stuff and they're finally going to land on the fact that xyz.example.com doesn't even exist, you know? 
And so that's what they're going to respond with. And so, uh, so they're going to respond with this thing. When it doesn't exist, there's this uh, response that's called in x domain. Domain, all right? In x, by the way, stands for non-existent domain. All right, it doesn't exist. It's not out there. Uh, so the issue happens not when one person types in a, an improper domain, uh, and you guys can try this. Go to Google, go to whatever. You go to your browser and type in, you know, 123.whatever.com and just see what happens. Uh, but you'll probably see some of these NX domain responses. And if you do that on your own, then that's not a huge thing, right? Because there's only one person asking for this non-existent domain. Well, what if you have a bunch of these attackers all asking for this stuff at the same time? That's the problem. That's where the issue comes in. Um, so let's say that one of these is programmed to ask for XYZ, another one is uh, programmed to ask for abc.example.com, and then another one is say 123.example.com, another one is you know 456.example.com, whatever, I'm not gonna write it all out, you get the point, all right? Just over and over and over and over, you, you put in these uh, subdomain um, random string of characters in these requests so that a couple of things start to happen. Um, remember in the, in the correct uh, example, when example.com was asked for, then it was uh, properly responded to by the name server. And then this guy, this resolver, is able to add that to cache. And then that way, if another person comes in and asks for that, then this thing can just respond right away because it's already gotten the authoritative response from the authoritative name server. Well, if all of these crazy subdomain names that don't even exist um, start to flood these different resolvers, then these things are going to fill up in cache with these requests that are tied to this response, an NX domain that is going to come back from the authoritative name server. So instead of coming back with an IP address, it's going to come back with this NX domain response. So then the cache on these resolvers are going to be filled up with XYZ, ABC, 123, whatever, and then next to that is NX domain, NX domain. So then these guys, the cache on these starts to fill up, and the problem with that is when a legitimate request comes into an ISP resolver, then this thing can't, it's, it's, gotta, it, it's not going to be able to answer from cache because its cache is full of these NX domains. Um, and so it has to you know, go to memory, or, or not go to memory, but go to disk, and that's computationally expensive, and it's, it just slows everything down. Um, likewise, this thing becomes inundated with these uh, requests that just don't even exist. And so, uh, so it creates a lot of problems. And this thing gets really, really bogged down with all of these illegitimate requests. Uh, but it's going to give the proper response, which in this case is the next domain. All right. So the, uh, one, of the, one of the problems with this is that, you know, you may start to ask yourself, how many of these attacker bad guy things could actually request things all at once? Well, you guys may have heard of the Mirai botnet which uh, controls many, many, many um, bots, as it were. And then these bots can you know, send requests on behalf of the Mirai botnet um, whenever they're asked to, right? Uh, the Mirai botnet, by the way, has, has like spawned off 50 plus other botnets. And all these things are loaded in with what we're calling this water torture DNS attack. And so there are botnets all over the place that are, that are primed, that are loaded to do exactly this thing. So it can be very problematic if the focus of their attack becomes your DNS authoritative name server. So you don't want that to happen to you, right? Um, so, uh, so what you need to do is put something in front of this. And, uh, and so this is where uh, F5 can come in. And we have our advanced firewall manager, our AFM which is our network firewall. And you can put that in front of your authoritative name server so that whenever any uh, requests come in, they have to go through the AFM and then the AFM can uh, pass the request on as long as it's legitimate. Well, what the AFM has now in version 14 that just came out recently is some really cool auto thresholding activities or features uh, that it can start to tune some of these requests and say, I'm going to put some thresholds. I'm going to start to recognize some of these uh, non-existent subdomains, and I'm going to auto-tune so that these are not allowed to request against our authoritative name server uh, as often as they would maybe want to. 
Um, and, then, uh, and then there's also some rate limiting things uh, that could happen um, in terms of how, how many are allowed to pass through, say, during a certain time period uh, type thing. So, uh, so that's really cool. One of the things that the AFM does is it can do some searching uh, back against your uh, domain and try to learn, or, or not, not necessarily try, but start to learn that, hey, if you are the authoritative name, for example, .com, do you have any relevant subdomains? Do you have, you know, ABC, one, two, three, whatever? And if those legitimately exist, then okay, then those types of requests can come in. And AFM is going to start to learn that stuff. So let's say you have ABC, but you don't have XYZ. Well, if an XYZ request comes in, AFM can say, hey, get that thing out of here. You know, that doesn't even exist. So I'm not even going to let that come to the authoritative name server to even let it respond at all. So it blocks the problem before it even gets back into your DNS uh, infrastructure for your specific network. So really, this, this can be a really powerful attack against your network. Uh, it could bring things down, and then, of course, your legitimate users are left, you know, without any kind of response from a DNS. And ultimately, they can't get to your website, which is, is not good, right? Um, but that's where AFM can come in, again, with some of the auto thresholding, some of the rate limiting tools that it does, the, the fact that it can start to learn the subdomains of your network and, uh, and keep the, the illegitimate, non-existent subdomain request out of your DNS infrastructure. So, uh, so hey, I hope you've learned a couple things here about what the water torture, what this NX domain um, you know, attack is all about. Uh, which, by the way, one thing, these things don't have to be spoofed. I know, uh, like I said, in, the, in, in other DNS type uh, you know, attacks, these different attackers will actually spoof the IP address of the target victim. But in this case, they don't have to be spoofed at all. They're just asking for illegitimate stuff. Um, anyway, so you get the whole point here. Uh, so, hey, so thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. And if you like this thing, you can click right up here on our DC ball and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.